our previous questioner was asking, you know, just because things are the way they are, well, businesses count on things being the way that they are. The local radio station uh, is counting on that things will continue to be the way they are when they decide whether or not to give the morning DJ a raise or go out and, and buy a new transmitter. So uh, as we change these rules, we've got to be very leery of the fact that uh, uh, different uh, companies throughout the country have uh, invested and made business decisions uh, based on these rules. So we've got to, we've got to really make a clear and convincing a case for that. Now I'm going to get off my soapbox. Uh, well, maybe not. I'm going to ask Mr. Portman uh, a question. I'm, I'm a former broadcaster, so I'm, I'm pretty simple uh, or sympathetic to, pretty simple but, and sympathetic uh, to the <coughs> fact that uh, it, it's a tough struggle uh, for, for broadcasters now. The same forces that your industry uh, is struggling with uh, in new new distribution mediums and figuring out how to get compensation. There's uh, no way a radio station uh, is going to get compensation uh, from Pandora, so they're facing a, a tough challenge. You list a litany of reasons why they're not uh, different from some of these, but I do I do point out that you know there's a historic uh, radio is highly regulated, uh, limited resource where you have uh, limited bandwidth. While well, you've got basically unlimited. Uh, room for expansion uh, in, in, in new programs uh, digitally. Um, so I, I just wanted to point out there is a, a uniqueness there and a synergy that uh, radio stations have, uh, have provided in allowing new music to, uh, to be exposed. It's different now when you can customize almost down to the song what you listen to on the Internet. You know, it used to be the record labels and uh, music publishers would uh, pay folks to go uh, try to get radio stations to, uh, to, to, to play songs. Uh, so we've we got to keep that history in mind. But anyway, I, I want to go on now to, to, to BMI. If we allow publishers to choose what they license uh, to uh, BMI, how do I know what I'm buying from BMI, what license I have, and, and what uh, I, I don't have? In a recent ASCAP Pandora trial, uh, a number of individual publishers withdrew licensing rights for Internet services in an attempt to negotiate more favorable royalties uh, outside the uh, consent decrees. When Pandora refused uh, higher rates uh, proposed by two of the publishers, they asked for a list of work owned by those publishers so they could pull them from their playlist. <coughs> The publishers and ASCAP, I, you know, obviously your competitor, uh, refused to provide a list of such works. Uh, this left Pandora with the option to p uh, pay the price pr proposed by the publisher, uh, not pay the f uh, price and face infringement litigation, or stop playing all music altogether. I mean, how do you answer that when you're when you're asking uh, you know, a asking for some change there? That we we, we deal with this issue. Thank you, Congressman. I'm a former broadcaster also, and, and I understand where you're coming from. Um, maybe that's why I'm seated between Mr. Hoyt and Mr. Knight, um, <laughs> now on both sides of the, the, the equation. Um, I can't really comment on what was done by my competitor, ASCAP. I can comment on what BMI has done. I just got done with testimony in our Pandora trial, and, and the same question was raised to me, and, and uh, we provided the information where necessary and where our, our customers told us to provide the information. Um, as far as providing uh, the information or transparency, as we like to call it, the Department of Justice, the review of our consent decree, uh, this is a big subject that they're looking at, and we're willing to explore that with them. We've spent 75 years at BMI building uh, that business, that expertise, that data, and we like transparency. Our writers demand transparency. That's how we pay them. What I don't think is appropriate is to give that same data that we've spent years and years gathering to give it to our competitors to build their business, and I think we'd, we'd fight against that. All right. What, what, how do you feel about uh, Mr. Griffin's uh, GUID uh, proposal? So you know, it used to be you could go look on the label of a record, and it would say ASCAP BMI. It would have the artist's name uh, printed right now. A lot of times in digital stuff, this isn't even available even in the metadata. I think it has merit. At BMI and ASCAP have recently formed a, uh, a, a venture called MusicMark where we're reconciling our two databases along with marrying it up to our partners up north in SOCAN, uh, Canada, the performing rights organization there, to get authoritative data. So I do think the, the industries are moving in that direction. So Mr. Griffin, you, uh, 
I really do like the idea, but you really think it could be done uh, in a year? I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm here's the stuck. irony. We've already got the GUIDs. We're not recording them. We're not putting them in a database. We're not making them available to the public. And why? What kind of market could we possibly have without the information? It would be like a stock exchange without the listing. I, I, see, my time, I see my time's expired, but I appreciate that. Well, and I also want to say, Mr. Could I, could I said YouTube is completely licensed, and it's not. It's licensed as regards as members, but it's not licensed as regards small, independent, medium-sized players who are not, uh, who YouTube can't find to clear the content. And that's obvious because the content that has no ads wrapped around it is all unclear because they can't wrap ads around that which they haven't cleared. So an enormous amount of their content is unlicensed precisely because they cannot find the owners. Could, could, I, could I make a comment on, on Mr. O'Neill's answer? The, the, so that you understand, we have been trying to get transparency from the uh, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC for years. We cannot get that transparency. They refuse to, to give information to us. It is my view that until that information is made public, all of the details made public, you cannot attain a competitive market. And, it, and despite, if you notice, Mr. O'Neill's answer was ASCAP, SOCAN, and BMI. That's not the users. We don't get to participate in that. We offered to invest in a, a, in a, a series of trying to get more cue sheet information, which is what we have for, for a television. They refused to allow us to participate in that whole project. So to the extent that there's a transparency issue, I think it is as much the collectives as it is anybody else.